Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Once again, we're back to talk about Applied Energistics 2 again today. And today our topic is wireless communication, which actually covers two primary subtopics. One which is obvious and used by pretty much everyone and another one that's a bit more niche. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is setting up wireless terminals so you can wirelessly access your inventories of your A2 system. And it all starts with needing to have a functional A2 system, even if it's a tiny little one like this. But the first thing you need to add to it is an ME security terminal because you need to have it authorized users onto your ME network to be able to use wireless access to begin with. And you just plop it down like that and just connect it straight up to your ME controller to provide it power and a network channel. And before we continue, you're also going to need to make a biometric card to go along with this. And you're going to need to put it in your hand and shift right click it to bind it to yourself or just right click it on another player to bind it to them. From there, you go into your ME security terminal, put your card in here and turn on which permissions you want the user to have. From there, it just automatically saves it to the card and you can take it out. So far, all pretty easy. It's just the security terminal step is the one that most people don't realize you have to do first. From there, you're gonna to wanna to build your wireless crafting terminal or the normal wireless terminal, but thankfully Applied Energistics 2 now has innately the wireless crafting terminal, which used to just be from another mod. And if you can already make the other pieces of this, this is also pretty trivial. But you once again, go back into the security terminal now, take your crafting terminal and put it in this upper right box up here where it will link it to you. And now if we click it, it says, well, wireless out of range because we don't actually have a wireless access point set up. Now, to be clear, the main thing stopping your max range and even having these set up at all at this point is frankly gonna be how many ender pearls you're able to get your hands on because this is the main blocker from here on out. But you can just put a wireless terminal on any cable and it will eventually turn on, it'll see device online. And then we can right click our terminal and we have access to everything as well as our crafting terminal. We can just click right in. You can also see the status of any jobs in progress just like the normal crafting terminal. The last thing that I should mention is you can upgrade the wireless access points themselves because you can come in here and they do have an upgrade slot where you can add wireless boosters. You notice that these do stack. Because if we put one in here, it raises the energy use, but also increases the range. If we add the whole stack, it significantly increases the energy, but massively increases the range. There are some mod packs that add an infinity wireless booster that usually requires killing the Ender Dragon or something else, which will put it at infinite range and across all dimensions. But by default, that doesn't exist. So that's all pretty easy and really quickly done, yeah. But there is another form of wireless transfer within this pack for AE2, and it's for the network itself because one of the things that you can set up is a quantum bridge, which requires these items right here, which is a kind of a rabbit hole to get into. But this allows the network to transmit wirelessly from one location to another, even across dimensions. But the first thing we're gonna need is a singularity, and that's a bit complicated. Because the first thing you're gonna need is a matter condenser, which is thankfully cheap to make, but boy howdy, is it not cheap to use. Now you notice that I connected this, but this does not connect into the matter canister itself because the matter canister does not need power. What we're going to be doing is putting an exporter on it because this is how you, one of the ways you can get items into it because what you need to do is start by giving it a storage component to get, let it store things in there and then just start throwing random trash in here and you'll notice that this ticks up and you notice that it has to store an awful lot there. But once this fills up, you end up with a singularity which is what the help in JEI shows you, but it takes quite a while. The usual solution in most mod packs is to use the kitchen sink from cooking with blockheads if it's available because you can pump liquids into this and that's an infinite water source. And if you have high enough liquid transfer, it fills up very, very quickly. There are other ways of doing it. You could do things like a cobble gen or any materials that you're mass producing or creating and just shoving it into there via exporter or uh, manually, depending on however you want to handle it. But once you have the singularity, you need the singularity an ender pearl or an ender dust and an explosion. And it can be an explosion from any source. But you start by putting your TNT down or luring a creeper nearby throwing the singularity down as well as the ender pearl, well, and then exploding them. Which creates a quantum entangled singularity and we need, these are paired together and if we were to create more of these do not stack because they have their own special MBT data that binds them together. Which is relevant to making the quantum bridge parts because we need to put it inside the quantum link chamber. And we're going to need two sets of these. So you need eight quantum rings and then one quantum link chamber and you put the rings down as per its name as a ring around the center. 
which then you put the quantum link chamber in and it forms and becomes part of the network. You can only connect your ME cables up to the four ring parts that connect directly to the link chamber. From there, you take your quantum entangled singularity and just put it inside this ring. And now this one is powered up. Now I should note that I've got a normal smart cable in here, but you can use up the 32 channels total for this ring. But it doesn't matter how many cables you have connected to these four blocks, it's a maximum of 32 channels no matter what. But with that made, we can now take our party somewhere nice and hostile like the nether and create another ring. And it works exactly the same as before. And you just put the other entangled singularity in here. And now this is all set up. Now you can run cables or do things like put a wireless access point on here, which will then match these two together and hopefully turn on. You know, if I'd actually chunk loaded the other side because these need to be chunk loaded to connect. I can't believe that this is how I'm gonna solve this by using a digital miner with an anchor upgrade. And the other thing that you need to do to get these to start up is to bootstrap some power into them with an energy acceptor and a power source. Once it's got that, you can pretty safely just knock those back out because now this is connected to your network correctly. So now we can slap the wireless access point on and access our inventories back home. So obviously what you're gonna to wanna to do if you do this is pass P2P tunnels back and forth since you're limited to 32 across dimensions. But this allows you to bridge all the way out to like fusion reactors out in the end or solar arrays out there or a secondary base in another dimension or another planet. It's pretty much up to you at that point what you wanna do. But that covers everything wireless with AE2. So if you found this video interesting and entertaining, please give me a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.